Robert, you must be happy with the way things went tonight. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 I'm ecstatic. I'm in the best band I've been in for 500 years. And uh, there's a lot of camaraderie. And every night, in every part of the, of the whole show, some indifference taking place. There's a lot of moving through the spheres. So it's, it's very exciting, yeah. But like, you've been around so much over the last 10 years around the world, almost in some ways under a certain radar in that you've followed your own muse and followed your own path. That's the way you've wanted to do it. And has it worked out as well as I think it has? Uh, it's been fantastic. I mean, I would never have imagined um, for the roots that I had in the, you know, in the kind of British blues boom and, uh, and my love of West Coast psychedelia and all that sort of thing, that I'd end up in Nashville singing with, you know, Alison Krauss and, and working on really fine vocal parts that were um, extraordinary, you know, the kind of the amount of restraint, because I spent most of my career just letting it go, you know, ah, 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 that's so that was quite a trip. But preceding that strange sensation, we made a, a particularly um, really interesting album in Mighty Rearranger where we were using loads and loads yeah. of uh, influence which follows right the way through back into this music right now because it's most of the guys from that group. Um, in between all that the band of joy with Buddy Miller and Patty Griffin I mean it's just very exciting for me to to try and see um, just how much I can really do as a singer you know I don't, I don't like the whole idea of, of hanging on to something that's kind of easy meat. I want to be challenged and I want to try and get it right. So I've sung in the, you know, in, um, I've been in the Sahara, I've been in Timbuktu, I've been playing twango with Tinara when in France, yes. you know, and all. I've done just do, I'm, you know, I'm not even lucky. I'm, I'm just, I push myself through doors and say, hang on, I've got an idea. And uh, people go, oh, it's him. Sure, but Robert, in so many ways, like you mentioned from 2005, you mentioned Raising Sand, etc., and what you've done the last few years as well. But when you think about it, the big voice that wasn't there and didn't need to be there for certain things you did in the last five or six years, it seems to be back tonight to me. Are, are you back doing the big voice? It was there. Well, you know, it's appropriate for what I'm doing now. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to get away from it because um, I think... You know, I was I was in the band of joy. I was in Le the Yardbirds. I was in Led Zeppelin. I kicked ass and used my voice, at sometimes kind of like an instrument, kind of psychedelic scat or whatever it was. And I pushed it up and I, I pushed the range up more and more as I went on. So I got to sing real high. And then when I started working in a different time, I found that a lot of that stuff was a cliche, and everybody else was. It was all around. Everybody was. There was a lot of that sort of thing going on. And a miss is as good as a mile. So I was glad to make the departure. And now with these guys, the energy level is so high that I can do it again in a different kind of different way. I've yeah. learned a lot about singing. I've listened, I spent a lot of time in North Africa and I've been, I'm a, I'm a student and yet I've got two or three voices now that I can use within, you know, the adventure. I mean, let's face it, if I was doing the same shit every night, I would really, well, we wouldn't be talking, you know. I'd be just coming back from Wolverhampton Wanderers beating Port Vale 3-1. So, okay, but hold on a second. When you go back to Wolverhampton Wanderers, if you go back to 63 to 66 or whatever, the kind of music that was coming over, you were all part of a little kind of a gang around there. And and the, the, the thing, that the glue that kept you all together was the music that you went searching for in some yeah. ways in the last 10 years, yeah. the music from America, all these blues yeah, guys. Always. Well, and, and I think really probably along with the country blues stuff tonight, we played that Buck of White fixing to die, you know, yeah. and uh, a whole lot of love. How far is that from everything that we know from the Mississippi Delta? But also, you know, we were hipsters in those days. So we were listening to the I can Tina Turner stuff in the 62, 64, uh, Lee Dorsey, yeah. some great Northern soul stuff. Um, Chris Kenner, Jesse Hill. Um, Daryl Banks, great soul shit, which was really, really special. And uh, <clears throat> I've been very lucky, you know, because I, I keep singing and I keep finding people that I really love. I was with Otis Clay recently, went to the White House with Buddy Guy, and, um, you know, uh, spent time with Buddy Guy. And then I was playing in Chicago recently, uh, Taste of Chicago. So I went to his club and we were drinking moonshine 
sitting there talking about Johnny Ace and uh, so the history and the times when um, creating music didn't have so much of a hoopla people just cut records and then they just threw them into the air and DJs picked them up and played them DJs had a lot of uh, power then and it was another world and I'm really intrigued by all that stuff so I I'm very 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 lucky to move to you know to have two or three options always and it's it's my divine right at my age now to be able to move wherever I want to go with whatever energy I've got well hold on a second Robert no matter what you did with Led Zeppelin even during that time we're talking North Africa here even back then we're talking incredible string band and folk music Led Zeppelin 3 to me a lot of folk stuff there, not just Blonnie R or any of those things, or Tangerine or anything, there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it's everywhere now, you know? And it's everywhere in, you know, I spend a lot of time uh, around American musicians now, quite a lot, and I've traveled through the Appalachian yeah. Hills. I've heard the Scots-Irish players, I've heard the Scots-Irish singers. I know guys in Kentucky who go and live in the Outer Hebrides for a bit, get back to their roots and obviously you know in your country too and so, so I hear a lot of that but I'm not a purist I'm a scavenger so I nip in and take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and and put it in the pot and, um, and that's really quite cute because I, I can't be branded I can't be you know I'm not an Americana artist although you know, I've had Americana hits and played at the Ryman Theatre that many times yeah. now. I just play, I'm lucky. Well, hold on, Robert, you make it sound like you're a dabbler in all of this. I mean, like, if you look at what you've done over the last bunch of years and some of the music that you've brought to yourself, let alone, like, you've gone to Nashville to do what? You've gone to Austin, Texas to maybe live. You've gone to, you know, the Raising Sand. I mean, a bluegrass album or whatever is there, a, like, you know, it sells three million copies. Like, you mean it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also, it was, it was working with a girl who, is claimed to be a bluegrass singer. She works, she plays great fiddle. Alison Krauss is a, a queen in that genre, but she had to move into a different mood. And that was really pretty much steered by T-Bone Burnett at the time, right. you know. And um, I brought along four, four or five songs to that cut, to that session, which she'd obviously never heard before. And, and she helped me kill him. I mean, gone, gone, gone. You yeah. know, the Everly's uh, Stick With Me Baby, um, you know, all those sort of things, Fortune Teller, where I got her to hum the melody line to Ferry Across the Mercy by Jerry and the Pacemakers. She never heard of it, you know, so no, no. it was good to um, to just, what the trucks call it, fairy dust. Fair, yeah, well, <laughs> Reg would, wouldn't he? God bless him. Yeah. Anyway, like, I mean, like, well, hold on, with, uh, it's obvious with the Raising Sound, it's just staying with Alison Krauss for a second. Was there never going to be a second collaboration? Yeah, we tried it, but it fell on its face. I mean, um, we, I think we relied too much on T-Bone coming up with a real uh, treasure trove of tracks and he didn't, he couldn't find them. Um, and he did try, so fair enough. But um, it was probably the right thing because um, Alison and I um, may get together again sooner or later. But then I, I moved on with Buddy Miller who played with us live and what a player. He introduced me to Patty Griffin, what a singer singer coming from a totally different place who by the way is playing shortly in Ireland um, this year and I'll be her driver if I behave um, so but I mean it's great because Patty sings she's kind of in the kind of bag with Mavis Staples and all those people so it's way different but singing alongside Patty was a real trip because we could really holler and wail do you know, when you're talking like this now, you, like you once called the Led Zeppelin thing a majestic, beautiful, accidental time. It's all a majestic, beautiful, accidental time, isn't it? Yeah, it is if you've got the energy and, and you really, really, really love what you do and you don't want to end up really dull and boring talking about when you played Madison Square Garden for yeah. six nights or seven yeah. nights or ten nights or 5,000. you got to keep moving. And, you know, um, it's funny just playing in Mali and playing in Morocco and, and, and being with musicians who've got a totally different etiquette is it's beautiful because it's really um, you know there are entire families of griots out there and playing tonight with Joel De Camera from the Gambia I mean his father his father was a very really famous uh, gimbri player and um, a ritty player the one string fiddle yeah. 
And, it's, and the story is that Joel Day tells the story that his father did a deal and in exchange for his eyesight, he became a maestro. So in Africa, you give something and you get something back. And I think I'm with maestros now. And there's such a kind of flippance and a joy about yeah. what we do that it doesn't matter, you know. It didn't even, you don't even have to put a record out well then, you don't yeah. want to be Well then, on that level, one part that doesn't matter is the fact that it used to be, for most bands, not just Led Zeppelin, album, two or for two years, yeah. album, two or for two years. That's all gone now. You can be under that radar and do what you want to do. Yeah. Timbuktu, etc. Yeah, yeah. And also, we just came back from 21 shows in America, which, where we had amazing um, artists opening for us. Uh, um, Phosphorescent opened for us. Bombino from uh, Niger. Uh, we were really lucky to get um, uh, so many American acts who wanted to come and start the show for us. And it was it was really, really good. So we were playing good buildings, good venues, and bringing in a contemporary crowd who were into this music, which is, which means that a lot of people you don't subscribe just to classic rock and think that RP yeah. is gonna be a rock singer forever and a day. I can mix it up. And you've met great people, you've been to great places. Do you realise though that the success of Zeppelin has allowed you to do that, if you like, in one way over the last 20 years? You mightn't have been able to do it as well as you've done it, or with the success that you've done it with in the last 10 years, say. Well, I would never have learnt if I hadn't have been in a creative environment. And learning is everything. Even if you don't learn very well, and even if you only take... It depends on, you know, it's the beholder. You have to just pick up what you can and I've been going to Morocco, for example, for uh, 40 years, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and digging stuff. And you don't have to have huge success. And you don't, you just go into the streets and you play. The Ganawa Festival in Essaouira on the Atlantic coast, the old um, pirate port of Mogador, you can just sit in a, in a corner and play with people playing a bendir and um, 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 let's um. Away from music for a second and stay with that. You've met a bunch of people who recently who are archaeologists or something, going to some islands off Tahiti to do something, and like that could have been a five month thing. You could have done that, i.e., no music, just do that. Yeah, that's true. Might you have done it? Yeah, well, I was pretty close. Um, but yes, I was invited to go on this uh, trip to the Marquesas, but uh. If I'm going to do any archaeological stuff, it's got to be on myself and my bloodline and the old Celts on the Welsh borders. Um, you know, um, the woman who works alongside me um, in our little management company, there's just two of us, she's Welsh and I'm claiming, I said, you're Saxon. What happened to you was Edward I brought all these guys down into South, South Wales to pacify the Welsh and you're one of them that came in. So she goes crazy. So I. I'm, I'm really interested in lineage and stuff within my own island. And, and getting on with the musicians that you get on with. For instance, when you came back in 07 for the One Led Zeppelin gig celebration day, the fact that, you know, John Bonham's son was there. People always said when Billy Preston was there with the Beatles, they were really mannered and they weren't fighting. Did you do less kind of not getting on because it was great no, to have Jason there? There was never any not getting on. It's just people go different ways and they've got different expectations of and different I can't call it ambition. How about perhaps just Jonesy's right? He's nearly finished an opera, and and I'm so proud of him. And yet, I think tonight he's playing with C6 Steve somewhere, twang, oh, okay. twanging a mandolin. And uh, he's. I don't think the whole deal about is is to be inquisitive and to get out and and ride the wild beat. And uh, so, you know, people choose to do what they have to do, and there was. I don't think I could ever imagine um, any real disturbance between old boys. You've got to put it behind you. And have you been forced lately, in the last bunch of months, maybe the last year, to look back on everything, including the last 10 years, not least Led Zeppelin, and not least seeing bands, the blues bands from 60 to 66, before all that in Wolverhampton, because the biography's coming out soon? Well, it ain't a biography. Whatever it is, it's somebody going around interviewing people. So. Well, it's, it's not an autobiography of Robert Plant. It's not, it's not you doing you, is it? No, no, it's not. It's oh, I thought it was. All oh, right. No, so, I mean, somebody's gone around and interviewed people who knew me somewhere along the line. So, who knows what it'll say? Okay. Curiosity, challenging yourself, restlessness. Is that, are you proud of those things? Like, that you are restless? Yeah. Well, no, I'm inquisitive. Yeah. 
not restless, really. And inquisitive for a lot of history as well. Yeah. History of your own country, yeah. not just this all American thing. No, no, no. Not the American thing. I mean, I'm. There's so many things that interest me, you know, and um, I managed to fill my time reasonably well, you know. I think you have, all right. Just, just one or two last bits with this. Like, when I look back, like, uh, there was certain folk aspects about Led Zeppelin. Can I just go to the Incredible String Band, which you've often mentioned? Like, I mean, 5,000 Spirits, um, Hangman's Beautiful Daughter, um, We Town the Big Huge, they meant an awful lot to me. Now, why do they mean so much to you? You mentioned the phrase Dreamweaver once about them. Weren't they just brilliant? Yeah. Well, Robin I mean, and Mike. yeah, yeah, exactly. And what a shame they couldn't actually, I suppose, you know, there are times and there are times when things won't work and they tried it a couple of times but they they'd lost the sort of ignition you know, somebody had dropped the keys down the yeah. drain but they were beautiful because they did take uh, they took folk music and transcended the kind of genre of it being quite serious and yeah. and they went into these beautiful and also I mean I actually Robin played at um, my son's wedding and he came along with Beena, his wife, and right. recited stuff from Beowulf. And, right. uh, you know. Of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> and then, well, no, I, of course, I booked him, so I was going, right. yeah, yeah, I'll have a bit more of that. And Logan was going, Do you know, well, what, why are we listening to this? On shit? Desert Island Discs, they had the Archbishop of Canterbury, and he picked all classical music, but he picked an incredible string band song. Yeah. Which right. is just the yeah. way it should be. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, finally then, just a couple of things. Um, in 2000, this is, this is a bit mundane, but in 2009, you got a CBE. And you also were made a chairman of Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club or something. Which was more important? Oh, no. I was made a lifetime vice president, oh, not, sorry, a, not sorry, a chairman. Yeah, no, That's all right. Well, you know, I mean, this, I don't know what it's all about. All I know is as the years gather around my old cranium, people throw shit at you. And so I've got keys to cities. My greatest pride, I've got the keys to Clarksdale, Mississippi. And that, Which is a famous song, I think. Yeah, well, no, it's a famous place. It, yeah, I mean, it's just a great place because the people of Clarksdale are, are black Afro-Americans who who wanted to say, Plenty, yeah. you, you've helped put us on the map and our music and the music of the uh, post-slavery. And I was proud of that. Well, I'm proud of it. There's one quote that you made once, which I thought was brilliant. You said something along the lines of, that you use your career as the wind in the sails of your adventure. Long may it continue, is that it? I think so. I hope so, yeah. Uh, so far, so good. There's always a lot of wind around with this band. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the most important thing in life besides the music and the endless search for all great American stuff that informs what you do? Is it family and kids? Yeah, I think so. I was just recently, I had a, a major birthday and we all gathered on the side of the hills in the Misty Mountains. Without it being corny, we were all there together and the kids and the grandchildren. And uh, somebody was passing a pipe around and everybody was going, yeah, yeah, what a time. Didn't we have fun? Yeah. Well, in the Irish language, Gunnairi and Boher, which means may the road rise with you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, thanks.